Welcome back everyone. Uh, I'm going to show you a very simple fly. Um, I get quite a few requests for easy flies to tie. And I'm going to show you the atomic worm, which is a very simple fly, probably one of the easiest flies to tie. Um, and the reason for showing you this is because I personally think it's a very underrated fly. And it's a very nice fly for both yellowfish and kraut. And I'll explain a little bit why I think it's an underrated fly, but later. Let's get to the fly first. So you cover the hook shank. I'm using a, a, a 8 0 red grip thread. Cover the hook shank to above the barb, and then run your thread back with open wraps to the um, eye of the hook, and that's the hook I'm using, 14731, uh, uh, size 10, and you need hook, thread, and you need vinyl rib, which which is a very, very um, easy material to work with as well. Now, you'll see in the vinyl rib, if you look at it from the front, you'll see that it has a, um, a flat side and a round side. Now, you tie the flat side onto the hook, right there, behind the eye, and leave a little bit of a space between the material and the eye of the hook. So you need space there to tie the fly off. Tie that in nicely, like that. Then you wrap, you can stretch it a little bit, and you, with even wraps right next to each other, you tie that vinyl rib on top of the hook. And the reason for that is if you don't make the wraps, and you can stretch that vinyl rib a little as well. The reason for stretching it is so that you get a slightly thinner body, a thinner um, profiled fly. And you wrap that all the way past your last wrap that you made when you covered the hook shank. So you go a little bit around the bend. Um, the reason for the wraps being right against each other is that you don't want the vinyl rib, because it's elastic, you don't want it to bubble through the wraps. If, if that happens, um, you're not going to get an even finish on the fly and your wrap, your vinyl rip wraps are not going to be um, uh, uh, nice and against each other. Uh, so the next step is you take the vinyl rib, make your first wrap on the hook shank, the bare hook shank. Second one you go onto the thread and you wrap that forward. Now, if you want a thinner profile fly, and I will tie it on a different hook just now um, with a thinner profile, but if you want a thinner profile, you can stretch it a little bit. I'm not gonna stretch it in this one, um, but I am gonna keep a little bit of tension on it. And you can put a bit of resin or, or um, glue or something on there. I don't do it on these flies. Um, going to get the thread. I use the rotary vise. It's very easy to, to use the rotary function on the vise to um, get that vinyl rib on the hook. We're just going to have to unwind that thread every now and then. And I just want to unwind that. There we go. And you tie that in right below the hook. I always tie down below the hook shank and behind the eye of the hook. Two or three tight wraps. Give it a bit of a stretch and cut that very short. There you go. And you tie that down and create a nice cone shaped head and tie that off and that's the, the atomic worm now this fly is tied on various different hook styles or hook models and different sizes you can tie it all the way down to a size 18 although i don't i don't really tie down to those small sizes um, 
smallest I would tie is probably a 16. Uh, and it's a very successful fly for both trout and yellowfish. Now, the reason why I say it's, it's underrated, oh, in fact, I'll get to that now. Let me just put the, the next hook in. Next one I'm going to tie is going to be on the 14682, which is just a different profile, or a size 12, but a different profile hook. Now, you'll see the size 12 actually looks a bit bigger than the, than the size 10 on the 14731, but it's exactly the same tying sequence. Um, the reason why I think it's 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 a very underrated fly is I think most people don't know how to fish a fly, um, and I think most fishermen want to cast something in the water and retrieve it, and that is where the big mistake comes in with this fly. Um, this th th there are bloodworms in in all our waters. In fact, there are bloodworms in all the waters worldwide, and in rivers, lakes, dams all over and these worms can't really swim you'll see them move in the water but they don't they don't swim from one end to another end uh, 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 under any sort of control so they just they just in the water and they attract fish because of their movement and that is why when you fish this fly you need to fish this extremely slow and I think it it's I don't think many people have the patience to do that um, I fish it on a very long leader I like to fish it with a 12 foot leader for trout in still water at least a 12 foot leader and just the one fly now you can fish it with a um, uh, a dry fly and use this as a as a dropper behind the dry fly. Dry fly will keep it in a specific zone at a specific level which is very successful which I've done quite a bit or you can fish it with another wet fly with a nymph or a small nymph. I never fish it with a big fly um, and use this as a point fly bay and and that is the the way to fish it. Thing, the main thing is don't retrieve the fly keep in contact with it, keep uh, uh, retrieving the slack, um, especially if there's a bit of a breeze. And that's that's probably the best time to fish this is when there is a bit of a breeze. And very good areas to fish this are right next to wheat banks, um, close to sandbars, mud banks, uh, where there's a bit of structure, and fish it very, very slow. That is the main trick with this fly. And you tie that all the way there, open wraps to the front and first wrap first wrap around the bear hook and then I'm going to stretch this a little bit just to get a thinner profile and you can warm that up a little bit by rubbing it through your fingers. That stretches a little bit easier. Make that thread a little bit longer there. And use the rotary function on the vise to get that vinyl rib onto the hook with nice even wraps. I use a J vise. It's a lovely vise. I've been using this for probably 15 years if not longer. Um, unwind those wraps and finish the fly off right there now I don't really use I don't really use the um, this hook for yellowfish although there are a few nymphs that I've tied on this hook that I do use for, for yellowfish I generally when I tie the atomic worm I do it on the normal scud hook and um, but this I would use for for trout in still water. I don't really fish these flies for trout in, in rivers, but I do use them for for um, for trout in still water. And remember, the longer leader you can fish, the better. Just there, and then you tie that off. 
people got put a little bit too much tension on it. So I kind of pulled the hook out of the vise, but it's fine. I'm done with the fly. Uh, and you can varnish them if you want to I hardly ever varnish my flies if you do a proper whip finish you don't really need to do a varnish but um, maybe I'll varnish these a bit later I'm busy tying a whole bunch of them and that's it that's the atomic whip now remember fish them long leader fish them very slow Make sure you've got a bit of patience for them uh, uh, to fish this and especially when there's a bit of a breeze uh, that's when i find they, they work pretty well and this is the atomic worm a very easy fly to tie you can try a few tie them in different sizes you can tie them in olive as well uh, try them out please leave a comment please uh, like the video please subscribe to the channel i'll be posting a few more of these videos soon Thanks for watching.